So hello everybody, welcome to another Big Match Revisited. I'm Mikey Burrows, alongside me as ever is the Scottish Adonis himself, Mr Chris Owellamo. How are we Mikey, you okay? I'm very well, thank you mate. This one should be really interesting actually because this is the Sherpa Van Final from Wembley. It's 1988. I am four years old at this point. I've never watched this game in full and I'm guessing you have never watched this either. No, I haven't. You know, I was I was ten years old at the time. Uh, never watched it. Heard some great stories uh, about it. I'm sure we'll get into that in a little bit more depth. But funny enough, uh, obviously this tournament's kind of evolved over the years. Had many different names, and I was part of the the the, the, the Stoke City squad that won the last LDV Vans Trophy at the old Wembley as well. So it kind of it's just bizarre looking at the Wembley, the amount of fans, the atmosphere in this match, uh, and again. Both teams coming in on, on good form as well, weren't they? What was the old Wembley like? Because we've just seen them walking out from that tunnel that was behind the goal, and it it, it was a long way behind the goal. It's a long old walk just to get to this point. No, it is. It is. And that, to be fair, it's for for the players walking out in that atmosphere. Uh, I know, I know what you mean when you. But that long walk you, it just gives you that a little bit more time to kind of process exactly where you are, what you have to do, take it all in. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be a few that have, that, that have had that like, kind of buckle uh, in their step as they, as, as they walk, you know, because it's, it is, this is, you, you know, it's game on. Uh, Look at them all looking for their, like, friends and the family. family. Yeah, because they'll be, they'll be right in the middle, you know, it'll be above the, 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 the VIP area, uh, as they say, the seating. Uh, it'll be right in the middle, right on the halfway line so it's uh, it's perfect for the, the, the I like to see the players coming out that long walk trying to see the family in the in the stands definitely emotional times because what's going through people's minds at this point I mean we saw like a very young looking Tomo a moment or so ago with his beautiful moustache um, <laughs> Keith Downing looks exactly the same as he does now the guy's not <laughs> aged in 30 odd years <laughs> but like what is going through their minds are they possibly kind of calm or is all that nerves just building up inside? Well, it's another game of football, isn't it? A game that they, they want to win. I think rules coming into it uh, as champions of, of the fourth division, you know, I think there's... I, I think the, the way that both teams went about business this season, I think Burnley kind of just kind of missed out. Uh, but they had good form. There was no favourites coming into this match. So I think uh, they'll know it's just another game and they're, they're, they're born winners. They had a very, very successful season. They're just thinking, let's, let's go and... Let, let, let's sign off with uh, with uh, with a win, you know. But uh, it's definitely going to be a, a a fantastic game. Both teams kind of nullifying each other, kind of kind of the threat. They've got pace in the team, you know, that physicality as well. But uh, all round good, good game. I gotta say, right, this is the best of. Um, oh, is that Steve Davis, by the way? That looks like Steve Davis is now Wolves' coach. That looked like. I'll have to check that on the on the teams when it comes up in a minute. Um, like the or it's an absolute spitting image of him if it isn't. Um, we're going to see kind of it's classic '80s kits, so it's very short shorts. Yeah, there are some phenomenal hairstyles going on in this as well. When you had hair, did you have a bit of a mullet when you were younger? Me, yeah, I always it was always probably a, a one or two. I never went any lower than that until uh, until a, a friend that I played with he he used to bick it with a razor. So ever since then, I've, I've started bicking it whenever I, ha I have to, you know, so... Uh, I never, I, don't, I can't even grow a moustache or beard now, never mind have one back in the day, you know, so, uh, yeah, there's some great, great, great... Look at, look at Ali Robertson here. You didn't mess about, he just looks like you just don't, you don't mess with him, do you? I mean, he is obviously super experienced at this point, maybe the most experienced guy out on that field. He's been there, seen it, done it. And then you've got the likes of Tomo and Robbie Dennison there and Andy Much are a little bit younger and I love seeing all this. Bully, by the way, it's just had the same haircut all the way through. <laughs> yeah. Never yeah. changed. Didn't matter what era of football he was in, it's just the same. It was just interesting, you know, just watching this as well. Uh, uh, and, the, and the actual game commentary, it's Andy Gray doing, doing the, the, the comms. And he's talking about Bully. I think he gave everyone the kind of heads up what to expect from Bully this season, but obviously he surpassed uh, all expectations. 
I think was it 50, 50, 51, 52 goals, goals this season? This season but yeah. he could beat he could beat the the post war record of fifty four goals if he got three three goals in this match. It was just all these little things, and I know Bully, I know that he'll have that in the back of his mind. I need to go out and get three goals today. I want to, I want to get another record. I want to put that one to bed. And that's what that's what you have to have uh, to be uh, like I say a professional player. You have to have that kind of that fight, that desire, that will inside you to go and, and break records, really. Hey, I love that. Just break away. There's no anthems, no kind of abide with me. This isn't the proper cup final. It's a big cup final, and it'll mean an awful lot to the players. And I was trying to tell you before, wasn't I, that it's one of those where officially, I think they say 40,000 Wolves fans were at this game, but if you ask anybody, well, it is Steve Davis. I knew it was. Burnley Number five. Um, the, the, there would be like um, at least 50,000 and probably there were probably another 50,000 in Wolverhampton that claimed to have been there that day. Crazy. Absolute crazy. You know, I think uh, when the, the way that the stadiums was kind of set up, uh, it's whoever's, whoever's taking note of how many people are walking through the turnstiles, fair play to them. <laughs> it's just incredible as well, because the old Wembley, people have never been. I don't know, had you ever gone as a fan? Well, obviously, I, no, I hadn't. You know, I think, so my first experience, we, uh, was, was the, the, the season that I signed for Stoke, and obviously we got to the, the cup final four months, three months after I actually signed. So to actually be involved on, on, on the day, you know, it's, it's, it's emotional, Mikey. I remember it the day before, you go down, you're training down there for a couple of days, uh, you go and have a look around the stadium, uh, and then all of a sudden, I remember that we never knew what the team was. We never knew who was going to be on the bench. I was on the bench that day. But some of the boys that got left out, you know, tears coming down their eyes because they've bought 20 tickets for the family. You know, it, it, it means a lot. Uh, so, obviously, I think it's only two subs back in the day here, which is crazy. Was it yeah. Nigel Vaughan and Jackie Gallagher? Who were the subs? Here we go. Here's the team here now. You know, think about the size of squads now, Mikey. You go there, you're, there's, there's 17, 18 players that's going to be involved, uh, and, and you take it from there. But uh, just, I'm wondering if what the players did beforehand, if they went down a couple of days before, if they went into the stadium and had a look around the night before, because that's the usual things, you know. But then it's family. How many of the players? Needed a hundred tickets for fat friends and family. Because yeah. this, this is all the things that are going on. Well, let's ask one of them. Because Andy Much has joined us. Hello, Andy. How you doing? All right. Andy, yeah, good. Doing? Thanks, mate. We're just getting to the start of this, and Looms is just talking about how many tickets that you'd have all had for friends and family. Oh, plenty, wasn't there? <laughs> it was. Uh, it was. Uh, yeah, it was one of them where everyone wanted tickets. Friends, family. People you knew in and around the club, it was uh, it was crazy really, but uh, but great at the same time, you know. Hi there, how you doing? How you doing, how you doing Andrew? How you doing, Skip? You okay, Mr. Robertson? Yeah, joining us early. He's so keen to get involved. Ali Robertson's here as well. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> Alistair. So talk to me, gentlemen. So the couple of days before this, did you go down the day before? A couple of days before, did you go in and see the stadium the night before the final? I think Ali better answer that one. I can't remember. No, no, can I? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we went down the night before, but we didn't go to Wembley until the day of the game. Right. Yeah, I think that was right there. Yeah. Because yeah. we had just been to Spain, hadn't we? And I think uh, we had drunk that much in Spain. I don't think we could go down anywhere else and drink anywhere else. <laughs> it was absolutely a fantastic week's holiday before this. It took your mind away from what was going to happen. So talk to me then, uh, uh, Ali. Like, so obviously the, you, you'd won, you were already champions of the fourth division, got promoted. So then you go away to, to Spain for a bit of downtime to enjoy it. But you still got a, you still got a cup final at Wembley to look forward to as well. But what was great was, I think it took away the nervousness to have got this big, huge game coming up. And I think it, it made the lads gel together and we had a great time over there. And yes, we talked about it, but it wasn't top of the list. We were there on holiday and it was great just to get away, 
the gap of just, we trained in the mornings and we just played a little five or sides and everything. That was great. It was great. You drank a lot though, didn't you boys? A little bit. We beat, we beat Burnley at the drinking on the, on the night. We'd been there about four nights. We were in town and we met them in the same pub. So we had to have a drinking competition and we beat them. Because <laughs> it was quite funny with Ian Britton. Before the game, I said to him, well, we beat you at drinking. We've just got to beat you today now. <laughs> at the end of the game, at the end of the game, I still laugh. I went to him and said, well, we beat you everything, really. <laughs> So how, how was that then? How did that work out there in Spain then, Ali, with uh, Burnley being out there as well? Surely there must be a little bit of banter going back and forth, a bit of, a bit of just, Yeah, it was just one night in this, in this like, nightclub come pub thing. And we were drinking, we were having a laugh. So we just said, right, come on, we'll have a drinking. Well, nobody can beat Jackie Gallagher at drinking. <laughs> they had about four of them trying to take him on, but he beat each one. Not a problem. <laughs> It was great. But, gee, how good were you at this drinking competition? Well, I think uh, I tried my best, I think. <laughs> I, think uh, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think all the lads in them days, you know, we trained hard and uh, we enjoyed ourselves off the pitch. But um, Graeme Turner, obviously, he kept us in check. Uh, he knew when to take the reins off and let us have a bit of a crack and a good time and a few beers like we did. And when we had to be working and working hard for the... Uh, the cause, whether it was playing league games or obviously this uh, this competition, which we obviously got to the final. But as Ali said, we did have a great week there. Had a few drinks, maybe a few too many, but obviously near the time we backed off and uh, got ourselves prepared for what everyone obviously was looking for, uh, looking forward to, I should say, sorry, uh, which was going to be a really, really uh, you know exciting time, uh, especially knowing. The amount of Wolves fans who had a resurgence from the doom and gloom days to um, all look forward to a, a great day out at Wembley. Much I need you to move, lift your camera if you can. All we can see is your mouth. Right. So what, what do I have to do? I, I don't do things like this. You know. <laughs> this is why I was trying to avoid it. I'll, it, I'll send Ali's wife round, and we've already talked <laughs> to her through how to do it. That's it, Muchy. That's it. Perfect. After that actually. Yeah. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey asked me about that long walk from the, the corner of Wembley onto the pitch. It is a very long walk. What's going through your minds at that moment in time? Is it looking for family? Just kind of, because you've got to take in the atmosphere. You must have walked out and it must have hit you like a brick, a brick wall. Well it, well, it did, didn't it? Because ultimately, you've seen it all before as kids watching cup finals and everything. And, you know, you turn up there. You know it's a, a really long walk. You've seen all the other teams in the past all walking out, looking up in the stands with the family and just soaking up the atmosphere, looking at all the, the fans that had turned up. Uh, the Burnley fans too, I must add. Uh, they, they brought a good support. Uh, so that obviously that made it a tremendous day. You say, <laughs> it's a long walk and uh, it gives you time to sort of settle your nerves, I suppose, uh, yeah. before before it all starts. What was the dressing room like at the old Wembley? I mean, we are, I see dressing rooms nowadays and they're so luxurious with everything that's going. Was it pretty bare? No, I wouldn't say so. I thought it was a great change. We've got big, uh, big uh, baths and all that type of stuff and it was all quite smart inside and type stuff. I mean, what you'd expect for Wembley, obviously not what uh, what's going on today. Uh, that's a different ball game altogether. They're like movie stars today, aren't they? But uh, <laughs> but <laughs> it was, uh, you know, it was definitely it was a bit better than uh, our home changes room at Molyneux, anyway. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> just you have just the England one. Sorry. Did you have the England dressing room? Um, do you know what? That's when you've got to go over to Ali because he's got a better memory than me. <laughs> Haven't got a clue. <laughs> I just know we were in one dressing room and Burnley were in the other. <laughs> That's about right, yes. And I'll be honest, being Scottish, I would have been wanting a away dressing room. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. There was no there wasn't any favourites coming into this match. The the, the, the media, the press at the time, they, they had this as a kind of level a level peg and just Burnley just missed out. You have been you have kind of won promotion, not comfortably, but as champions. What was what was what was the feel amongst the group of players? I know you're you're a confident group, and there were some big characters there. But Burnley had that as well, didn't they? 
Well, I, I suppose if, if you looked around our changing room and what we'd achieved in the, in the period of time, there was no doubt in my mind that we were going to uh, uh, win, the, win the cup. But however, you never know at Wembley what's going to happen. You know what I mean? It's a sapping pitch, all these different things that go on. But, you know, you look at Ali, the skipper, Bully, Keith Downing, Denno, all the lads on the side, and you thought to yourself, you know, and, and funny enough, I think if you check the records, we always played well against Burnley and invariably beat Burnley. It was just one of those things, you know what I mean? So, although they were a decent team, right, I personally was very confident that we were going to we were going to win that day. Uh, we just had to make sure we turned up and uh, not take things for granted. Uh, but yeah. we had too many good characters in the changing room because you know there's a lot of people got football ability as we all know. We've all been in the game, but you know when you got the type of characters we had from Kendo in nets and then right through the back four midfield and obviously myself and Steve up front, you know all solid characters as much as uh, anything else you know what I mean and uh, yeah. you know if you add ability to that it always gives you half a chance to uh, win a game of football but I, I believe strongly that we were going to win hindsight's a great thing right obviously yeah. but uh, I, I did believe we were going to win you know because Ali I mean you'd been there seen it done it by this point say that again you'd been there seen it done it by this point no 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 it was my first game at Wembley this oh, was absolutely, for, as for me, this was like heaven on earth. Like, I'd played all my life, I'd got to semi-finals, I'd got everything, never got to Wembley. And this, to me, was the biggest game in my career. You got, you got to see then, Ali, the, the, the experience, you know, missing out on, 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 on occasions, like you just said there. <laughs> you know what, and, and, and I, I guess the way that you led the dressing room as well, did you have to... Did you have to have a few little one-to-one -one chats with a few of those players or, or no need? No need to. To be fair, we all knew our jobs and we all knew what we had to do. And what was the biggest part for me was when we turned up to Wembley and were driving in the, in the bus to go to Wembley, all we could see was gold and black. And we, the supporters were incredible. The supporters were incredible. And all I kept on saying to lads now, this is, this is for us, but remember, this is for those lads outside. This is especially for those supporters. And it was great for the club to see the situation that we'd already been in, and to do this, brilliant. What about Graham Turner? What about the manager? He seems very relaxed, very comfortable. I know he's had a lot of success, but again, did he, 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 I guess he's brought you in. He's recruited, recruited a lot of your players. He trusts the dressing room to, to govern itself. Yes, Graham was brilliant. He just told you what we were to do. Everybody knew what we had to do. And he was a great manager. He'd come to the club. He changed the whole way we played. And it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And you could see the confidence grow between all the lads. We've already seen, boys, this is a, a different era of tackling, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could tackle. <laughs> Something, mind you, you'll show later, one got me a beauty. Well, I mean, I was, there was one that went signing in there, and I think Keith Downing's already done one in the first couple of minutes as well, which is no surprise. <laughs> yes, the tackles were tackles, weren't it? As long as you didn't go over the top, everybody was a hard tackler. And it was one thing you didn't do was go over the top. You weren't dirty, it was hard. And that, to me, was the biggest thing because you know when you're in this kind of game like i mean i mentioned keith downing because it feels almost as if like you know you're like right first tackle make an impact make a mark Muchy, for you what was your kind of go-to in that early part of the game up against your man are you thinking right i need to let him know that he's in for a battle today yeah <laughs> i don't think just particularly this game i think every game you knew that because you know, you didn't get the protection you get nowadays, so you had to stick up for yourself. Um, and, and ultimately, it's funny really, because Keith was just, when you were talking about Keith then, he was, from the minute the, the ref blew his whistle, he was like a Tasmanian devil. He was amazing. We watched the video of a game once where the ref had hardly blew his whistle and he'd, he'd put a tackle in already after about two seconds and chopped the fella in half off the kickoff. And, you know, there was no doubt in my mind, you know, that all the lads, right, uh, not just 
in uh, the league, but up in, in the final situation, exactly what they're up against and what they needed to do because you know there's you don't get any uh, any favours from anybody in football. That's a fact, and everybody knows that. So everyone was tough enough and stuck up for themselves. And you know, playing with Bully, we had some <laughs> the hell, we had some battles. Um, I remember playing Bristol City once, and I was really looking forward to the game. We kicked off. We'd only been playing about 30 seconds. Bully's going, much way the five. Give it the five. Because it started already. This people have thought, Christ, here we go. We've only been playing 30 seconds. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, and, and here's Ali there. He was, he was probably one of the toughest defenders you'll ever come across. Hard as nails. He used to kick hell out of me in training. But as he knows, I used to leave my studs up now and again just to let him know I was there. And he used to moan at me, you left your studs up there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was all, all all in the game, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, there was afterwards there was tremendous respect, you know, whatever we did, and that's the, that's the way it was. Wasn't it? I like the idea that sorry, Lens. I like the idea that it didn't matter what you're going to go up against because you were dirty enough on each other in training beforehand. <laughs> Well, that was it, you know, even, you know, a lot's been talked about the car parks on a Friday. You wouldn't believe the youngest with the oldies, how competitive it was and coming off with gashes, scrapes, like you never believe. If, you know, if there was human resources and health and safety now, we'd, we'd be worth fortunes cause, because they've had to pay us out so much on <laughs> training on that car park. It was unbelievable, honestly, it really was. But I tell you what... What a crack it was, though, you know what I mean? And, you know, it, it grounded you tremendously, you know. You know, we all had a bit of banter and got above ourselves messing about, if you know what I mean, having jokes. But, but, you know, in real terms, it grounded us all as people, you know what I mean, as human beings. And, you know, and that helped us take it onto the park. And you know, you're talking about Graham Turner. And I was here from day one when Graham came in. And the, he told players exactly how it was going to be. And a few of them turned around and said, I'm not happy with that. I don't need to mention names. And he just slowly went bang, bang, bang and got rid of them all. Yeah. And the people who were prepared to listen to his simplicity, because that was the truth. He just made things simple and says, this is the way we do it. You know, there's no other way. And that, that's it. You know, like it or don't like it. And uh, everybody respected that. And obviously, that's where you start to develop, a, obviously, a decent side, I suppose. Well, you both touched on there. It was Wolves, it was like the great demise, and this was like turning the corner, obviously the fourth. Oh. But does, doesn't that put a little bit more pressure on you to actually deliver? Oh. What a chance that is. Well, I personally, there was no pressure on us because we, we, we were a nothing team. You know, Graham built a team, right? And we had to, you're still up to the plate. It was your career at the end of the day. My opinion was, you know, Ali had had a tremendous career for years before I started kicking the ball at a professional level. And um, so my thought was, there's tons of lads here, most of them not good enough, and he's moving them all out left, right, and centre. I don't want him to move me out because I want to make a career in the game, you know what I mean? And uh, so there's no pressure there. You just work as hard as you possibly can and use whatever ability you've got to try and... Uh, do of your best, you know, and yeah. uh, ultimately, it's yeah. such an example for all the lads, you know, Floyd Street was such an underachiever for a tremendous centre-half, and he, he came up to the fore and started playing. Bully, Tomo, Keith Dowling, Phil Robinson, all these lads who, who deep down, had not quite done what they were good enough to do uh, elsewhere, and the, they all realised this is the last chance saloon to a degree, you know what I mean? Because if you get released from us now, where are you going? Where's your career? Yeah. So, so part of that, it was a blend of everything that, that sort of took everything on the rise. But, you know, when we won the fourth division, right, I mean, I, I will never forget saying to Gary Pendry and the gaffer, saying, listen, we'll piss division three, excuse me, French, because we're a good side and I know we're going to beat everyone in the next league above. And we did do, because we were good enough. Obviously, after that, the step beyond there gets a little bit tougher. Uh, and we just missed out on the playoffs uh, to go to League One, which is now the Premier League. Uh, and we just fell short a little bit, but we weren't far away with, with the side we had, you know. Yeah. Well, I, we've just done, um, we do been doing a series of looking back on old season reviews. And we've just done 89 90, Muchy. And, oh, oh. Um, probably going close in just a second for you. Um, 
I, there is a bit where, because I felt in that season of 89-90, if you hadn't got injured, and then when you came back, I think you got sent off and then suspended, and the form dipped a little bit without you. Well, I can't remember that really, if I'm being honest. Um, I think if it was being sent off, it was at Bournemouth away because I only got sent off twice. Um, I do remember having a really bad back injury, but other than that, uh, I don't remember the team's form dipping too much, but you might tell me more. But Yeah, there was just a, a, towards the end of the season, it was kind of you'd got yourself right up there. And then I think there was just too many draws towards the end of it that kind of cost you. And then um, it was West Ham on the last day. There was somebody, might be in Middlesbrough or someone who ended up pipping you. There was a big game about two, three games out from the end of that season. Right. Pretty much the end of it. Um, of course, Ali, you only lasted four games into that season. And I think you've told me before that you didn't really expect to play much beyond this campaign, did you? No, no, once I'd got a contract up until we, we won the third division and my contract was up. And uh, I thought that was me finished. And we got, we got promoted, it was fantastic. We're in the second division, brilliant. And um, to be fair to Graham, Graham company says, uh, I'm giving you another year's contract. I went, I went, you what? I says, my legs have gone. He says, no, no, I'm giving you another year's contract. But he wanted me more or less for the dressing room Rather, that I knew I wasn't going to play because I knew I wasn't going to be good enough to go into the second division. And, it, and but the lads, it just we just kept everything together in the dressing room. Everything was going right, and it's like you say, it's just a pity we just didn't get into that last little bit and get promoted. Was that was that easy for you to accept, Ali? Then that you that you weren't going to play as much, or had you accepted that kind of up here? I had accepted it because I knew I couldn't do what I should be. I couldn't. I couldn't do what I should be doing. Yeah. And I was missing tackles. And, and you, you know yourself. Once you get to that age, you know then it's time to to give up. But I still wanted to be in part of the dressing room. I think that is the biggest part of football and the greatest thing that all players will say. The dressing room is the best place you will ever have. You'll ever be. And it's keeping everybody positive in that dressing room. And the one thing about Graham, if he said something and there's a couple of lads that didn't agree, I would talk to those lads and go, Oi, he's right. Do what he's telling you. Come on, got to back him. And that's where, when Graham, this is one thing about Graham, when he started, I didn't like the way he was playing all these long balls. Well, I went and said to him, I said, I don't, I don't actually, he said, you actually say it. I'll show you it works. And within four weeks, I went back and knocked his door and said, hold my hands up to you. I can see it all work. Great. Brilliant. And that's when, we, that's when we then went on that great run. Brilliant. Yeah. I have to say, I'm, I'm looking at this match and it's very much end to end. Have either of you watched it back before or is this the first time you're having a good little look at it through and through? First time. But, yeah, I know it's the first time I can see you. I can see you having a little smile every time you smash, smash someone. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? Oh, Bolly's here. Hey, hey, mate, okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> everybody all good? All, all good, good. All good, kiddo. Yeah, sounds up there, mate. Mad me, Dad. Good man. Good man. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> Is that old age pension at the bottom? <laughs> oh, it's that Scottish twat, that toy twat. Oh, it's a Lee. It's a Lee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just remember who taught you all those things. I know, how to yeah, drink I know. and how to go out. Just remember the Tuesday Club. I know, mate. That's that's all credit down to you, mate. The Tuesday club, all down to you, and uh, we were very lucky we didn't get caught and or get caught drink driving or with ten in the car or whatever. We never did. <laughs> that was quite funny, you know. The Tuesday club, when Keith Downing got the uh, the job for taking the England under 19s, I, I text him saying, "Remember, you must keep the Tuesday club going." And he did. He says, no, no, no problems. <laughs> Billy, Billy, I have to ask you, you were on 52 goals 
uh, before this match. Uh, I think the post the post war record was fifty four. Was that was that in the back of your mind at all? Absolutely not at all. Um, the only thing that was in my mind, I wanted to score at Wembley. That was the only thing. And uh, to this day, I didn't know I was going to play for England at Wembley. But so that that day was an absolutely unbelievable day. With I don't think it was about sixty thousand Wolves fans there. I think there was, and I just wanted to score. And uh, when my old pal out there scored much, I thought that that's that's more or less on par. I'd rather have him score. To be fair. Well, you think about it. I think Muchi was on 22, 23 goals, 52. You know what? That's 74 goals between the two years. No, no wonder you won promotion. What, what was, what was that relationship? Was it just as good off the pitch as it was on the pitch between the two years? Uh, not really. I couldn't stand him to be fair. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a, he's a good lad, Muchi. And uh, like Ali says, uh, we all stuck together. You know, whether it was the front men, the back, back two. Left back and right wingers up and down. We're all, we was all in together. And I always say to this day, from you know, 86 to about 92, that was the best spirit I thought was in the club. Uh, when the money started coming in in 92, 93, you now I respected the players who were coming in. But uh, it was like a bad apple in the cart. It upset the cart a bit. And uh, some of us, some players went, some new players come in. It all disrupted it. But uh, I thought them was the best years uh, uh, when we played football. I'll, I'll, I need to ask you then, Ali, why, why was it so good? Because the age difference between the whole group of players, it was, it was very balanced, but it was, it was right through the spectrum, wasn't it? Yeah, but we had that from the start. And the great thing about it is when you're winning, it don't have to make it easier. Yeah. But once you're winning, you don't want to start losing. And you could see everybody actually fighting for each other on the park but you'd fight for each other off the park as well. And that was the same in training. And we used to say to everybody, you've got to do training the same as what you play on a Saturday. So Saturday training, the tackles that went in on training, like much you said earlier, it's sometimes you're thinking, good God, how can nobody be injured? But that you have to keep that momentum going. And that's, that was brilliant to see everybody together. Like I was 30, I'd be what, 34, 35 at the time. Bye bye guys! Oh, oh, oh Muchy's big moment! Yes! <laughs> yeah. no, I never. Fox in the box, always in the move. Back foot, it was behind you as well, Muchy. Just at the movement. Boom, there we go. No, no chance. Keeper got a hand to it though, didn't he? No chance. Brilliant. Well, he should have saved it probably, shouldn't he? But the truth, hey, I tell you what, what you know, the sea bunny lays it on for me there, look. We were like Toshat and Keegan, we were on the slide, <laughs> weren't we? <laughs> we didn't say that much here, but uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, not Toshat and Keegan, no. <laughs> yep. I tell you what, put it right back in the, the danger area yeah. there, Bully, as well. What a header that is, Muchy. It's, it's behind you, you've got to work your feet yeah. quick. You, you've You're got the first one to say that, Chris, you know. What a header that is, by the way. Yeah, every, you're the first person to say it was a great header. You know what I mean? But you know, it was great. On it, you know, that's the truth. You know, you you dream that you'll score at Wembley. You dream that you get to Wembley for the L. Uh, once you're there, you know. I mean, I don't know. I didn't particularly think about scoring on the day. I just wanted us to win. You know, and what will be will be. I expected Steve to score. He scored every week without fail. It's it, just the way it is. You know. You know, obviously some games you don't score. It, it's just the way it was. But uh, you know. Good for Steve was he actually uh, ended up scoring at Wembley for England, you know what I mean, which is uh, another level altogether, you know what I mean. But um, it was just, uh, yeah, the brilliant, you know, it's hard to describe really. Memories, it, it, they go, don't they? Uh, I haven't seen this game at all. The only thing I've seen at this game is maybe little clips if we've had dues with Bully or whatever, and there's a little bit comes on on a big screen or something, and you see a goal being scored or whatever. But I've never, ever, ever watched it, ever. But you, all your memories are there, though. You, then you never take that away from you. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I remember as a kid, you know, going to Wembley lots of times to watch Liverpool. In that time, they were there all the time. So I was a kid, in 14, 15, going there all the time, watch the, the fans going down Wembley. Way. And I was thinking to myself, imagine what it's going to be like when we play there with all the fans, because we knew there's 50,000 tickets being sold. And going around near Wembley on the way from Cock Foster's, I think we came from the hotel. I think it was that one. Anyway, we end up 
sort of near Wembley, Wembley Way, and it was absolutely packed to the rafters with Wolves fans everywhere, and it was just, just amazing, absolutely amazing. And uh, how could you think that happened when Ali signed and Bully and Tomo came, and the club was in such a mess? It what it wasn't true. It, it, it was unbelievable, really. You couldn't even describe it. You know, everyone's tried to put the point across as best they can, but. It, when you look, think back now, it was an absolute shambles to place, right? However, you know, Graham built a side and bloody hell, we're there now. Look at Wembley, frightening. I need to ask, how, how many how many tickets did you all have? Was, was Ali in charge of the tickets and how they go? <laughs> look, I'm smiling, I can hey. tell already. Or with hey, the... Chris, if Ali was in charge of the tickets, no one would have got any. <laughs> Scotland, don't forget. <laughs> you would have, have got one each. I always gave you one. <laughs> It was quite funny because I, I come from a big family and uh, I had twelve. I had to get 12 tickets to, for the lads for all my brothers not to come down to Wembley. But it was brilliant to see them there at Wembley and just to win. Incredible. They still talk about it now. Ah, I remember they used to do this, talk to the manager as the game was going on. Yeah, yeah. So great. This is brilliant, isn't it? But this, imagine that happening today. It's, it's not usually... It's, uh, it's pitch side, does it? It's BT Sports that does it. They come pitch side, they talk to someone, don't they? But it's usually a, an ex-player or something like that of the team. But that's, um, that's the last thing the manager wants to do when the match is going on. Very interesting to hear the view. It's bonkers, isn't it? It is absolutely bonkers. You know, on the tickets thing, by the way, I can imagine Bully at about half of Wolverhampton trying to get hold of him <laughs> to get tickets for this game. I wasn't as popular in them days. <laughs> Give over, you've just scored 52 no. goals in one season. It's worse now. It's worse now. People ringing you, I've got to get me a season to get game with this. No, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> oh. Surely a foul. I'll tell you what. Here he is. I'm not sure oh. if he had something to do here. What's he done there? He's played on. That's a free kick, isn't it? Yeah, the ref was awful. <laughs> well, right at the start of the match, uh, you, you played on for about two minutes because you couldn't hear the ref's whistle because of the atmosphere. So it went out for a throw-in, and yet the play actually went on for about 90 seconds because you couldn't hear. He's chasing the person with the ball with the whistle the first 90 seconds of the match. It just shows you how loud it was out there. It was a brilliant atmosphere, absolutely unbelievable, it's scary and uh, as you say when the lads say you looked around the ground and three quarters of the ground was gold and black and uh, you speak to these Burnley fans uh, now and they say it was their favourite day as well even though they lost, uh, all the fans were playing football together on the car park, playing against each other, Wolves, Burnley and whatever and it was all, it was just a brilliant day and to top it off as you say, we won the game, you know what I mean and that made it special for us. It's been a really, a, genuinely, I've never watched this myself all the way through. And it's been a really good game so far. I mean, there have been some absolutely shocking tackles going in. Yeah, but fear tackles, Mikey. That's what I'm seeing. You know, uh, I don't think they've, I, I mean, uh, nowadays, Keith Downing would have been sent off by now. <laughs> and to, I mean, there was a bad challenge on... Uh, on the little handsome left back that we had that day as well. Are you looking at the moustache, mate, are you? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Tomo's here. How are you? Very good, mate. Uh, Bully's here, Ali Robertson's here, Andy Much is here. We've just seen Much's goal. Um, what was this day like for you? Um, so it was unbelievable. So, like, just the first day when we went in there, um, Went down there a couple of days before, um, and we knew what it meant to all the, the fans and everything. So it's all my family, friends. So like the amount of tickets that we had to sort out, and at that time as well, there was no ticket office as such, electronic ticket office. So it was all done with uh, cash on delivery kind of thing. Did you get your hair permed specially for this? Yeah, all natural, mate. All natural curls. <laughs> That's what Ali was claiming to me earlier. I don't believe either of you. <laughs> <laughs> he's, you see? he's a bit of his moustache. 
<laughs> just, just saying, Tom, uh, Muchi and, uh, and Ali, they, they couldn't remember if it was the day before. You said a couple of days there, so did you manage to, to get into the stadium the, the, the night before the game, or was it just you see it when you turned up for the match? Yeah, seeing when we turned up, just the noise. The noise levels when we come out, was uh, I couldn't believe it. Like the amount of noise, because I we outnumbered. Burnley fans as well. With I think there was about fifty thousand Wolves fans uh, compared to their fans. So it was it was just the occasion. The so Salah and we we were favourites to win it after how we done in the the season as well. So to get the victory um, was brilliant. I'm just watching that. That's when you could tackle. He's hurt himself there. Rob, Phil Robinson's hurt himself. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Ali, Ali liked a couple of tackles in his time. <laughs> you know, I always remember, yeah, son, if somebody kicked you, I'd look after you. <laughs> when when the referee used to used to book Ali, and he said you were late on that one, Ali says, "What are you on about?" He says, "I was early for the next one." <laughs> <laughs> Ali, if you were looking after Tomo, who was looking after you? Tomo, all the lads had to look after me because I was the old man. <laughs> I was their dad, so they had to look after me in every way. I used to tell. Them, I always remember when we went there because he was a bit older after he'd gone from the Albion, and I used to always call him Granddad. I say, oh, "You're our Granddad today." <laughs> and I was like Granddad. To you lot. <laughs> Taylor got up well. Tomo, we were talking beforehand um, about your big trip to Spain and out drinking Burnley before this because you lot are probably the biggest part of the culprits of the Tuesday club, weren't you? Oh, yeah, well, again, organised by uh, the veteran Ali, so like he sorted it out. Um, but, yeah, it was, it, it was strange that in preparation was to actually go, go to Magalov or Santa Ponza at the time where we went and to have a, a week there. I could, I could say that there wasn't a very high standard of training going on anyway. Well, in the football department. <laughs> do, you not, do you not think that was a, a class act by, by Graham Turner again? He knew, he knew how big, obviously, you, how well you have done, but it takes a little bit of focus off and it allows the player to relax, knowing that there's a, there's a big uh, cup final at Wembley coming up. Is that not a... A class act? Is I think so. Well, it is and It is now that we won it. But uh, the <laughs> thing was, he knew what we were like in the, in the time that he come. Um, in the, say, like, the two years that we had there where we won the two leagues uh, back to back. We had that uh, camaraderie where we all went together. Everybody, and I'm talking about everybody. It wasn't just a few. It was the whole squad that we used to go out for a drink. And, and that was the way that we were on the pitch and off the pitch as well. Boys, I was just watching there, Floyd Street. I, I mean, my dad's kind of talked about him a little bit. I was, I was kind of too young, unfortunately, to have seen him a bit. But he was so quick there. How good a defender was he? Floyd, he was brilliant. He, was, he shouldn't have been there at that time. And I remember when, when I went to Wolves, I phoned up Big Ron and says to Big Ron, there's a lad here, centre-half, I says, he's absolutely brilliant. And, uh, but he knew him from the Cambridge days. And he, and he says, he's just lacking something. And I says, now, Floyd, eh, should have been, should have done better. He was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant defending. Pace, heading. The bigger the game, Floyd, he was great. The thing that you have to be careful with Floyd, eh, and the lower games where it didn't mean anything, he was so relaxed. But the bigger the game, he was brilliant. He was brilliant. So is that the only thing that was lacking? Because, I mean, he, he's an absolute unit. The size of him, the pace that we've just seen there as well. Yeah, he had, he had everything. He had absolutely everything. And I still can't believe to this day that he never got to the first division. Cannot believe it. Is that, is that not something like, I think all, all managers, all scouts, coaches, especially back in the day as well, they had that relationship with each other that, like you say, they do their due diligence, don't they, Ali? They'll, they'll, they'll ask. And maybe the fact that he couldn't get up for certain matches, how relaxed he was, as, as well as the potential he had, 
that can be off-putting as well for a for a manager, isn't it? Because they think it's they want to buy someone at that level that's that's the, the, that's already made. He's, he's he's done that. He's he doesn't really have that 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 many negatives. Is that is that not something that that would probably go against them and maybe stop that move from coming? That would you're probably right there because when he was playing in other teams, whoever the managers were, it's like you say, all managers would phone each other up. Yeah. And each one would probably say he just lacks this one little bit. And if you want to go to the top, they don't they don't want to get somebody that's lacking something. And it's a shame because he, he he just needed a good gapper behind him and he would have been brilliant. He was he was man of the match at Wembley and, and he deserved it. He was absolutely brilliant. Just see Mickey Holmes struggling on the sidelines there. I can't. I don't think the camera picked up exactly what <coughs> happened to him. Does anyone remember? He went over on his ankle, I think. Yeah, it was his ankle, wasn't it, sir? I don't know. Yeah. It was a tackle or involved in something. He went over on his ankle, didn't he? Yeah. Because yeah. don't, don't you trying, remember? He was, trying, he was trying everything to stay on, wasn't he? He's trying you everything. Remember? Tom, do you remember when he was down and he was playing everybody on side? So we had to help him off the pitch. <laughs> yeah. Remember, we said you're keeping everybody on side. Get off the bloody pitch. <laughs> it's that desire there, isn't it? No one wants to go off in a game like this. No. no. Just been smashed there, really. Haven't you? Yeah, Steve Davies. He's with the club now, isn't he? Yeah. 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 Under 18 he's coach. He's just a sweet allow that was, Bully, I think. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Billy's, Billy's just put that in the little black book for when the, the, they have the kind of training, training at the, the, the game down the training ground, isn't it? Yeah, the staff yeah, against. Yeah. He just put that in. There you go. Get there was nothing wrong with the, there was nothing wrong with that tackle, what's up? <laughs> no, no. He was, I think he was just amazed at my first touch. <laughs> <laughs> Can't type the short no, that's scandalous. That was one of the that was one of the softest tackles I've seen so far. <laughs> um is you mentioned the shorts bully. This is an era where um if we're being kind of gentle with it, we had to be careful that shorts didn't ride up too much. Yeah, well, there was. I was looking, look, you could see him now, can't you? That's absolutely scandalous. And uh, to be fair, I'd prefer him like that uh, because uh, you, know, you ain't got the baggage a bit too low where I can grab hold of you and stuff like this and whatever. But uh, it was a bit on the borderline of, of uh, uh, yeah, what, a thong or something, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still had to have mine took up. Yeah, right. yours, are like, <laughs> yours are like trousers. <laughs> They're still there to my knees. <laughs> <laughs> have you still got your shirt from this game, boys? I will have somewhere, yeah. I will have somewhere. I've got, I know I've seen the shirt when I was uh, sorting a few things out, and, but I think I've got probably the full kit somewhere. Well, you must have this shirt. I don't think I'd, I think I might have given it away, to be fair, because uh, in them days you, you didn't care. You just wanted to say, go on, have it to your mom, your dad. Your brothers, your sisters, same as theatric balls, all of them have disappeared apart from three uh, because you want to give them to somebody who'll look after them and put them on the mantelpiece and say, thanks very much. You know what I mean? So I don't think I've got that, that, that top, I'm sure I ain't. This is the thing, though, Muchy. Listen to me. I scored so many hat tricks, I just gave the balls away in the end. <laughs> yeah, it was too easy for him, wasn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> top corner, left foot, right foot. Anything he'd score for fun, wouldn't he? I used to scream him to pass to me. Next minute, he'd rifle it in the top corner and go, oh, Jesus Christ. I was going to swear then. I thought, maybe careful. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Just, but it's the just, same for me. I, I gave my top away. And to be honest, I can't remember who I give it to. But I haven't got a single top of anything that I had uh, in football. Soccer, pair of shorts, nothing. I just, everything I had, I, I'd give it away. I, I had a few England... B caps and stuff, and I give them all away to my dad and different people, you know what I mean? So I haven't got one kit of any nature in my house from playing football. Unbelievable. Ali, talk to me. Big Floyd Street there, he's down in the right wing wing area. He just <laughs> drove and drove and drove. He's a centre back. Surely yeah, you've got to be pulling him in there beside you. No, no, if he went up there, 
all you brought was uh, Gary Benham Bellamy back inside. Come on, son. He's going up there. You don't, don't got to tuck in. If we all do a little bit, it's not a problem. Chris, I can tell you, Chris, I can tell you about Floyd Street, yeah? When you were talking about it with Ali before, um, I personally believe, obviously, at the very start of his career, he sort of wasn't producing. And how he never played in the first division, I'll never know. But I personally believe it was the other clubs not doing their own work properly. They're too busy on the phone, like Ali said, saying, oh, he might not have this or not that. If they've actually turned up to watch him, because they couldn't hesitate to take him. But because he'd sort of left a, a bad impression on himself, maybe in his early days at Cambridge or whatever, I know he's at Derby County for a bit, people sort of pigeonhole him to be a certain player and not have this or not have that. But he was absolutely outstanding. I mean, Ali played 18 years in the first division. And when they were playing next to each other, you know, it was just that they were both the same. Brilliant for each other. Uh, brilliant understanding. And how he never played in the first division, I I'll never know. And I think it was down to the, the basic scouting in, in them days and word of mouth and not actually going and seeing with your own eyes. You know, I mean, I remember Graham Turner used to go watching all sorts of games and sign lads. Obviously, he had Ron Dukes uh, doing it for him as well, but yeah. they used to go and see all the players. And that's why he signed good players like Tom O'Bully, Ali Rob, Paul Cook, all these lads that came in because uh, they actually went to see him. And I suppose what Bully said before was right. After 93, he started throwing money at players, right? And I think they were signing players on the name and the reputation and not seeing what they were actually producing at that time. Um, so that didn't bear fruit really for quite a period of time did it but uh, you know I, I, I'm amazed Floyd never played in the first division because if anyone had come and watched him for me when he got him when Ali came and he started getting himself going and Graham disciplined him in a certain way and told him what he expected his performances were like most of the lads who were, who were doing the top draw because Muchy the, the thing is is like the club started spending money to try and get promoted and it didn't work, and yet you went on to go and play in the first division when you left, or well, the Premiership as it became. Well, I did, but to truth be told, I didn't want to leave. Uh, it was just that the gaffer decided he wanted to change for whatever reason with a few of us. Uh, and obviously, at the time, maybe because I was a striker, clubs came in, and you know that was the opportunity I took. And uh, I really, it was a big, big disappointment when I left. It was a real sad day for myself. Um, However, I did meet some great lads at Swindon, right? Some really good footballers. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't good enough for the uh, for the Premier League, but we did, you know, have a go in games and played some great games and had some great experiences. But um, you know, I really didn't want to leave. I suppose, and I always hoped that they were going to come back for me because things were going wrong a bit. And Bully did mention that Graham Taylor had spoke to him about me, but uh, it didn't happen. And there you go. But um, you know, there's no guarantees when you sign players until you. Until you get them in the club and see what they're all about, but um, unfortunately, we just didn't sign. I don't know what it was, but as Steve said, you know, so eighty-six to ninety-three was sort of a real golden time, if that's one for a punt. But after that, sort of the more money involved, then it's, it's I don't know. It's more difficult to get them to gel properly. I suppose you have to do it in maybe a shorter way, not to sign too many at once. I don't know, but. Um, yeah, so there you go. Ali, you know, like, obviously what much he's saying there about Graham Turner, he's got a little bit more money to invest. Is that something then? Would there be a, would there be a little committee with the players <coughs> that you would discuss signings or things like this? Is that anything that, as I say, as captain of the group, you had any input in? No, no, no. It would, because I got on great with them and Powley and everything was there and Gary Bet, we actually all talked to them together anyway. But uh, he would never have come to me and asked me, do you think about this player? He would never have said that. That that would be between the coaching staff. He would never get other people involved. That's but because he didn't want to go to the wine bar, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't allow him to the wine bar, would we? <laughs> we won't let the gaffer in that wine bar in Wolverhampton. No, definitely not. What was it called? Kips, was it? Kips, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's the bit that I couldn't believe. When, when I joined the club, I couldn't believe that when training finished, everybody just went off. And I couldn't, I couldn't see, and I could see why there was no camaraderie between each other. 
Yeah. And that's when we started doing that. You could see the whole club change completely. You could see the whole, the way the whole players started to talk to each other and started to do things together. And that's what happens and that's how it did. And to see the club move on how it did, brilliant. When you say do things, you mean drink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> team building, team building, mate. Yeah, team I suppose building. as uh, Ali said before, Jackie Gallagher was just on a different planet when it came to that. Yeah. Uh, he came over to ours once when I was lived over at Highbridge Way at these sort of pubs, and the last orders were eleven o'clock, and eleven o'clock comes, and we've had a skin full like he goes. Do you have one for the road? I said, okay. And he comes back with a pint for me. And he bought himself four pints. Yeah. He had a pint of Guinness, a pint of Aria, a pint of Bitter, and a pint of something else. I don't know what it was. I was thinking, Jesus Christ. And I still beat you, I'll beat you drunk the four quicker than you drunk you won. He probably did, yeah. you are. You're not wrong, Ali. <laughs> Tomo, Tomo, I have to ask, how, how important was that then? You know, you, you come into a new club, we, we bully the two of you, Ali comes across, but it's important that you have that, that connection off the pitch, that team bonding. It's vital, isn't it? And that was a great group of players, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. So I, was I was only 19, so I said Bully was a couple of years older than me. So I'd been at West Brom for six years, so I'd been there from being a schoolboy, apprentice, then a pro. So it was a massive upheaval for me. Um, even though Wolves was my home team, my home club, it was still a big thing to, to leave West Brom where the ground was great. Um, I, I kind of just got relegated from the first division as it was then and then to the, the championship as it is now. But look, it was massive. So look, it made it easier for somebody else coming along with me because I didn't drive at the time. So, and again, Bully, Bully was uh, the one who took us down there and we was talking and wondering what we were going to do. And it, it, it was it was a massive decision, so to actually go there. But in hindsight, from what happened, it was it was the right one. And you just got to feel you've come from a team what's established in a higher division than Wolves at the time. But it just felt right, and it, it's, a, it's a matter of minutes that we made the decision because you just had a feeling about what was going on, the way that Graham sold the club to us, and then again, say up with the way that the players were there as well. I know, we didn't start off very well, but after that, I think we lost the first three games, I think it was. But then after that, we've gone on a great run and ended up losing to all the shots in the playoffs that first year, which in hindsight was probably a great thing. But it, it, it was, it was, it just felt the right place to go. So is that Nigel Vaughan on for Mickey Holmes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael, I, I've got to go now. Muchy, brilliant to have you with us, mate. Thank you so much for joining us. Are you welcome, say good. Thanks for Chris and all the best, lads. Oh, but Thanks, Muchy. All the best. Lads. See you, Muchy. Take it easy. See you now, Tarot. Don't go, go to the down. pub. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get off this. I haven't got a clue how to get off it, by the way. <laughs> 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 you see, it's proper technology, isn't it? Let's see what you do. Just don't say nothing. Just don't say nothing what you regret <laughs> before you go off. <laughs> He's gone. Um, Ali, a quick word from you, actually, because we saw the challenge, I think, and here you are now struggling. Yeah. Um, and it kind of came from that moment when Floyd Street went on that run that you had to cover for him and fly into a challenge. That's right. And to be fair, the centre for him, it was a hard tackle, but he got me a good one. I would have been proud if it had been the other way around. I would have been <laughs> But he got me, and I thought that was part of the game at the time. So I, I did my, I got the ball, we won it. And it, it's all right, so it, that's part of the game. But it did, it did all, it killed me, didn't it? To come off, that yeah. broke my heart, broke my heart. You also, by the way, got the sign of, um, I was watching when you were getting treatment, the, you can tell the difference in time, because the physio, instead of having like a bag or anything, it looked like a briefcase. And I don't know what he pulled out of there to put on you, but there didn't seem a lot in it. It's the golden sponge, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> probably give you the shot, Ali. Yeah. He <laughs> probably no. He probably should give me a lagger, shouldn't he? Yeah. I'm probably, I'm probably, I'm probably all right. <laughs> so talk to me, Billy. This match, Ali, the, the captain, the captain's off. Mickey Holmes is off. You're in control of the match completely on top. What's 
if you can remember, what's what's Graham Turner saying at half time? He more or less said the same as the first half. He says keep on doing what you're doing, what's happening and whatever. Uh, but the players, no disrespect, the players who come off, we've got the same level of players going on. So we weren't even, we weren't worried about that, you know what I mean? And I think with us one at half time, that gives us the momentum to keep going and going and going for the second half. Say we're getting closer, we can win this, we can win this, and we had belief in ourselves. So you weren't worried at all with the amount of alcohol that Jackie Gallagher had put away the week before? <laughs> no, no, no. If you'd, if, you'd have, if you'd have been there, Chris, you wouldn't have been playing that day. Trust me. It's, uh, <laughs> we could have sunk a ship, mate, over that week. I, I, I can tell you. <laughs> Usually you do things like that after you've played. Yeah. But uh, like you said before, Graham got it right. Uh, he, never, he never went into any trouble off us or anything like that. At all. We did our bit. We played naughty sometimes. But we, we, on the pitch, we did it right for him. And it worked, and he, he got the right scenario out of, out of us all. I've seen you on nights out, by the way, Bully. I know if that's a fraction of what you were getting up to at the time. No, he's, he's calmed down now. Um, yeah, I can't, I, can't do the four, I can't do the four o'clock in the morning job now. That's gone. Uh, it's only three. That was just a ritual before, Tom. I would have a ritual. We can't, we can't go back home before four o'clock. But now, we are all getting old. <laughs> Who got the captain's armband, by the way, when Ali went off? I don't know. I think Gary Bellamy had it, I think. I thought it was Gary Bellamy. Yeah. yeah. So have you had to reorganise? It's uh, top right back now. Yeah. Keith, I think Keith went to left back, didn't he? From the bench, Jim Rosenthal has with him. Gary Bellamy come into, you went to right back, Gary Bellamy, centre half, and that was it, wasn't it? Yeah, didn't Keith go? Did Keith slot into left back? Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised you even took this uh, this interview, Ali. You must let you say you were heartbroken, and then they put a microphone in front of you. You know, you just won. We were winning, and we still looking. We were good, okay. And all I kept on saying, we just need the second goal, and that would be it. And here it comes. And it was fantastic. Second goal goes in. There we are. Done. Sorted. But we always had that confidence, Ali, when we were playing at that time, that we could beat anybody. You know, when you say like at half time, I would, he said, all the same. We, we same. had confidence in, in the team that we could score against anybody. Yeah. And, and that was the case in, in those like, uh, years that Bully and Muchy were playing together as well. And then I'll come up with a few. No, no game. Come on, son. Come on, Tuffin. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I cross it or shall I shoot? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Get in. Oh, what a goal. goal. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Uh, but that is, oh, look at that. Did, when that went in, that was us. You knew that was us. We were going to win. Easy. Yeah, it's a great finish, wasn't it? Yeah. Not scoring at Wembley, though, wasn't it? Because he did the Mercantile Classic as well, didn't he? Scored a great goal there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Was that the Football League centenary thing? Yeah, he scored against yeah. Everton. He scored it. He scored Everton, yeah. Goal in that yeah. One as well. It's like it's the nonchalance of it because he doesn't even have like a big kind of swing. It just almost clips it. Yeah, so, well, it was the accuracy of what he did, didn't he? Didn't need to put too much power. It was just about getting the right position with the ball and making sure that it went where he did and it put us the 2 0 up. But you just watch the way that we play. I know that teams go on about it nowadays, about the closing down, the way that we yeah. work to get the ball back. You just watch that, and, and I know teams go, OK, we've got to press the ball, press the ball. You watch the way that, that we work as a team. We work so hard to get the ball back. Yeah. Well, it's, I think it's, it's definitely a must. I'm just watching there. You know, I think you, you, it was spoke about that you're very direct team at this point, but... I looked at Bully there, you've came, you've took it on your chest. You already know, Bully, that there's there's two runners busting, breaking their neck to get in, and, and it's one of them, and it's a controlled pass over the shoulder into the path of the player. So you all knew your, your jobs, your responsibilities, but you also knew that you're, you're going to have willing runners there breaking their neck to 
they kind of got there to support you as well, isn't it? Yeah, he was. And uh, like we said before, he just epitomised what Graham Turner did is, is getting the society together. And like Ali says, uh, the first time Ali says, you ain't going to play like this long ball. And then after four weeks, Alex, uh, Ali's eating his words. And we knew we, we, everybody in that side would, uh, would die for each other, if you know what I mean. If it was yeah. a, a fight in the street or on the pitch, we'd die for each other. And that's all it was. And it was, it was absolutely unbelievable. Yes, absolutely unbelievable. What about, what about, you know, obviously Ali's already said there that he didn't agree with how Graham Turner uh, wanted to play at first, but then he held his hands up. How much work would Graham Turner put into it on the training pitch? Because you are all, you know exactly what you are doing, all of you. Yeah, he's, 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 he's like a, any other typical manager, you know what I mean? But uh, you have to have a good number two as well. We had Paoli there as well, and uh, after that we had Pendo. Uh, we had quite a few good number twos as well to slot in as well. So it was like a, a good cop, bad cop, and that's either work, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, I mean, Graham come in, did his job to the best he could. Uh, when the money people started coming in, he couldn't handle that. And then that's more or less when he had to part company with the club and get somebody else yeah. in. But yeah. he did a cracking job, mate. He did a cracking job while he was there. It's the same as people say to me about us building the club up. Me and Tom came and we started the evolution off. So Jack with the ground. He had to let it go. Steve Morgan come in. Now the Chinese, it's like a big snowball. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, I mean, that's when he started in 1988 onwards. That's when we started the revolution to get this club where it is now. One thing is as well, you play to your strengths. And we had two lads up front who were quick, powerful, and could score goals. Yeah. And we knew that if we got support to them, they'd score more. And again, say like Holmes has scored his fair share as well. So it was all about playing to people's strengths on the pitch and I think that Graham found that very quickly and found a way of winning and that's what it's all about, trying to get that formula to win games. Yeah. But again, one thing that Graham used to say to us, like me as being captain, we used to talk and everything, but he would just say, whenever we weren't playing or somebody was on top of us, I used to just say to all the lads, right, go man for man for five minutes. And we'd just go man for man for five minutes, kill the game, and we'd know we'd be back on, bullying much again. We'd start then put them, giving them something to, to uh, look forward to. But we, yeah. could kill the, we could kill the game off at any time. Yeah, that but that's what I'm thing. saying. You had to be fit. You had to be fit to do that, Ali. So obviously you've been put through your paces. To go man to man, five, ten minutes, you have to be a fit group. To be able to go and have a few drinks a week before in the build-up, you have to be a fit group. You knew exactly. So... I think that, again, it's down to the manager, knowing his squad, knowing his group of players, to say, right, they can go and have their playtime, but when they're with me, I know that what I'm going to get out of them. Because I know when it comes to it, they're going to be fitter than the other team. And when it comes to it, they can, they can battle and fight like the other team. But when they want to play, we can play ball with the other team as well. You had that balance all the way throughout, like you say, competition for places as well. Yeah, that, that was it. Training, like I said earlier, was exactly the same as on the pitch. We all knew there was probably 15, 16 players at the club at the time. If you didn't play well, there was somebody got to take your place. Yeah. So you knew you had to. But training was brilliant. Training was brilliant. That was the one good thing about it. When I joined the Wolves, training was abysmal. And I, I couldn't believe how the standard was in training. But to be fair to Turner, then it turned around, then Bully, much uh, bully, and Tom would come, and you could see the whole thing change. And Graham, it was down to Graham, he got it all going right, and that just shows you on the pitch there how we, how we got it right. Yeah. But we used to do a lot of fitness work as well, though, didn't we? Oh, yeah, that yeah. That was yeah. the thing. We used to work really hard, and, and, and again, if you're doing that, again, you're just watching the video here, the way that we press the ball and chase yeah. it, that was one of our strengths. Because yeah. we tried to get the ball as quick as we could to get our forwards away. And if you've got somebody who scores, what, 50 goals two years back-to-back, -back, and Muchi, what, scored near enough 30 goals, he'd be your leading goal scorer to any other team. Yeah. But if you're getting, like, 80 goals out of your front two, of course you're yeah. going to start to play to them. Yeah. So you're 2-0 up now. You're in kind of the ascendancy. Bully, Ali's already said he thinks that you're going to go on and win from this point on. So what goes through your mind? What are you, what's the game plan for the remaining period? I just think uh, uh, as, as, as a striker, 
I'm just, I, me, I was just being selfish. I was thinking, get the ball through a kick. I want to score. I need to score. And uh, I was watching the clock for the last 15, 20 minutes against 19, 18, so that we're nearly there. Because you're looking at the clock thinking, oh, we, we, another five minutes, keep it tight, keep it tight. And uh, it just it just went on from there. It was like two up there. We, we're not cruising, but we know we can keep solid and we can keep pushing them back. You know what I mean? The more they play in front of us, the more they ain't going to hurt us. And that's what we kept doing, chasing, chasing, chasing. Even whether it's a ball in the corner or down our corner, there was always a man chasing, chasing the ball. Is that because it's kind of, that's the only real way you knew how to play in this team? It was, you know, I mean, I think it's uh, drilled into you, you know, I mean, if your work rate's there, your talent will come out of it, you know what I mean? If you ain't got no talent, well, your work rate to get you through it. It's just one of them, and that's what, what you're saying on there. Chasing here, we used to like baggerage and, the, and all up and down the hills, left, right and centre. Like I say, Tuesday morning, we used to leg it around the pitch up and down the south bank and out Tuesday afternoon and back off Wednesday and then play Thursday and train Thursday. But we was all, like I say, we was all in together and that's, that was a big part of all our success. Billy, to, to, to score the goals that you scored, you have to be completely addicted to scoring, you know, like I've I've played with strikers that when they won games and they hadn't scored, they, they, they felt that they had they couldn't they couldn't enjoy it as much. Were you, was that was that the way that you were put together as well or exactly the same, exactly the same. And that's why uh, Tom will tell you as well, after this Burnley game, um, I think we was all having a few beers and I was quiet for about an hour after because I hadn't scored. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, after That's I, why I give his shirt away. Because he had to score. Yeah, I went, I don't want this. I don't want this shirt. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's... Uh, but you have to have that as a striker, don't you? You have to have that, and you? You do, you do. And, you know, I look at some of the games and like what you said earlier on, I should have passed some of the balls and then someone flew, flew in the top corner. You've got to have that bit of selfishness in front of the goal. Yeah, I mean, you've got to have it to be, to be a natural goal scorer. But scoring the goals as well, you know, I was on, I was on 100 quid a goal. So I needed to score goals. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> under quid a goal. I was on. I was good. I'm having that. And in 1988, <laughs> that was a even bigger chunk of money. <laughs> it was, but uh, no, it's it's as you say. Yeah, he, 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 I scored the goals, and much he assisted, or much he scored some goals. Tom I'll cleared off the line. Mark Kendall saved one. Ali put a tackle in. We all did it together. So, and it didn't matter who scored the goals as long as we win, because we had a win bonus. We're getting to the higher the, higher the, uh, the league as we could. So, like you say, it was all all sticking together. Right, let's play a game then. How many of the 52 goals that you scored in this season would you have given away to have been able to score in this game? Oh, man. Oh, jeez. None. He given, would have given no, you none. No, no, I wouldn't have given none at all. I'm just being greedy. <laughs> I'm just being greedy. Um, I'd, I'd have given as many as... I'd have given 10 away. 10 away, easy, just to score here on this day. Because it, it, it was a brilliant day, mate. And he's like you say... Not many people are going to play at Wembley, well, especially the old Wembley as well. You know what I mean? It's absolutely unbelievable. I love that. Ten. You didn't even have to think that hard for that. That's clearly been in your mind before. Well, he's got goals to give away, though, isn't he? That's the thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? What, what's 52? Oh, no, you never asked me that question. <laughs> yeah, how many penalties would you give, Tom? How many penalties would you give away? Oh, no, I've lost count of them. I've lost count. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Actually, this is a point, actually, because I say we've done 1989-90 um, on uh, Re-Reviewed recently, and we've also done 94-95. And, Bully, why is Tomo on penalties and not you? Uh, because uh, I used to take him at, at the start, and uh, I missed one. I think it was against Kevin Pressman, I think it was. And uh, that, that was it after that. I went to get the ball, and then this little blow run underneath my legs and pick the ball and said, oh, I'm having it. And that was it. And I couldn't get the ball back off him then. That was it. Once he scored the one, he shot, he scored his first penalty. He had a little skip after he'd done it and legged it to the fans with his arm in the air. And I thought, he might as well have him. Mate. Let him have him. Let him have the penalties. <laughs> well, they're dead, mate. They're dead. Just keeping them. <laughs> <laughs> what happened when he missed? Hey. Hey, Tomo, it, it's very, very missed. It's very rare Tomo missed. Trust me, very rare. Very rare. He does, he does miss at least one, I've seen, in, in 1989, because I messaged him about it straight away. Then he got a really fluky retake from the referee, allowed him to then do it. No, exactly no, the fluky, same no fluke about it. I, mean, I missed three in total. Uh, uh, as Wolves. Uh, the Shepherd Wednesday game, we're in the bar, the FA Cup. 
I missed one against Stoke and I missed one, I think it was against Berry in the fourth division. So, it wasn't too bad. Um, I think we can hear Mickey Bobby. Holmes' wife talking to us. Hello, Mickey. How are you, mate? I managed to get there, mate. I'm not, I'm not good on technology as well. <laughs> We've just seen you crawl off, Mickey. <laughs> Have just you? seen you crawling. <laughs> That's the quickest I've moved on it, Tomo. <laughs> i tell you what, there's a bit of stall in your crawling technique as well, mate, I'll tell you. You've well. done that before. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I'm telling you that I'm watching this right, watching the game two 0 up, and still going all out. You know what I mean? It was just was was. There's obviously like obviously Ali's just said there like when when you were when you were under the cosh a little bit, you could change it up and you go man for man. But I'm not seeing any any hold back. Let's just take this. You're going for a, a third goal, aren't you? Well, yeah, but to be honest, when you've got Muchy and Bully up front, you just, even a nothing ball, you know what I mean? So we basically be on the attack most of the time with them two up front. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So end to end, really, because you know where, put the ball over the top and one of them were onto it, wasn't it? It looked, it looked a quality ball, even though it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. So, Blake and James, look at the games he's played. How did you feel, Mickey, having to kind of go off in this one? I was gutted. I was devastated. I, I remember going down. Um, I think God rest his soul, Paul Comstead, um, fouled me, and I was on the sideline. And I think he, Tom, Paul Darby was a physio, and he called yeah. to me, Mickey, Mickey. I went, oh, said, "Don't bottle it." I went, "What? How am I going to bottle it? It's the biggest, best game in my life." And obviously, we ankle ligaments. I could, when I got up and started warming up, I could run straight. Obviously, you know, just to say I was okay. But when I got back on the pitch, obviously, when the ball got put over the top of me, I turned the opposite way, and it just went collapsed. And in those what a miss, eh, Chris? Sorry, what's mate. going on? What a miss, yeah. Rob I played, Bill Robinson. I, I played with yeah. Robbo at uh, at Stoke when I first signed at Stoke. Oh. He was one of the experienced players, but oh, I tell you what, all day long, Billy, that's in the top of the top of the, the top bend, isn't it? If you're coming onto that, mate, isn't it? It is, mate. I think he was a bit complacent. I think I think he was just going to be a little tapping, but uh, he got distracted by the player, um, by the other player, putting his foot in. So yeah, I mean, you got to give him that. Waiting for Davis to get forward. Comstiff Unbelievable. Mm. Yeah, Where was like, Bully? Like That's the big before, question. But like you said before, we never never give up, never say die, Vic. You know, I mean, yeah. we just keep going and going and going, and we die for the cause. Mickey, when you get told that you're not coming back out for the second half, how long did it take you to kind of come to terms with it? And did you go and sit on the bench or did you go and get showered and stuff first? No, as um, soon as I did it, I knew. I knew how bad it was. But obviously, you're hoping, you know, to get back on. But then, basically, at half time, it just, it, it, the swelling was that big. Um, and then all the, all the lads went out wishing all the best. And then, um, I think about 20 minutes later, um, Jackie Gallagher come in and carried me on his shoulders to the bench. So I watched, yeah, I watched the rest of the game from the bench the last half an hour. Um, Were you dressed? No, no, I still had my kit on. Um, obviously, the doctor must have got lost in the crowd, but I mean, it wasn't like it is today when you <laughs> running on. So it basically, you just said. Uh, and it, it was just the, the day. No, nobody knew, you know, where, what should I do? Should I come out? Because I couldn't even walk there. Do you know what I mean? Um, so basically, Jackie come back in and I got on his shoulders and he carried me to the bench and I watched the rest of the game from the bench. Kicking every ball. Kicking every ball and having a go. I, I, being a manager, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you what, some challenges going on. Aye, there is. Mm -hmm. It's Tomo again. Yeah, to Tomo is pretty guilty at this, I've got to say. <laughs> I've got to learn from the best, Ali. <laughs> Not as bad as him. Not as bad as him. <laughs> so we've had Andy Much and Ali Robertson with us so far on this. Um, I don't know where the bully and Tomo have got to go shortly, but I've got to show you if you can see. 
Got my special Tomo t-shirt on. The mates and the we. There you go. <laughs> is, that, is that his actual size? <laughs> yeah, it's a life-size picture of him. <laughs> I don't know what that says about Tomo or about me. <laughs> Tomo's Tash. <laughs> It's a glorious period for Tomo's moustache, this. Oh, I don't know about that. He's had enough on it today, mate. He's had enough. There's still a lot of fans that want it back. Uh, your fault, that is. <laughs> yeah, oh, penalty thing. kick! It's a penalty, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Just outside, didn't he? Oh, I tell you what, he's in the box. Tomo. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a penalty when I saw it. Surely we get another look at that. Surely we get another look. I want another look at Jackie Gallagher's moustache and perm there, combo. There, there's really. a moustache for you. <laughs> That's definite what the Scousers was based on. It was you and Jackie Gallagher, wasn't it? Harry Enfield's characters. <laughs> no replays there, Chris, unfortunately. No. I'm, 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 I'm seeing penalty. I'm thinking VAR's calling that one back. Yeah, it was close. Okay, here's a good one, right? If there was VAR now, in this period when you were playing, how many goals would Fully have lost? And how many times would Mickey and Tomo have been sent off? Me and Tomo? More, more than I did. <laughs> more Tomo and Ali Robertson. Ali wouldn't have seen the first 10 minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we always used to say, didn't they, the first one's a free one, innit? And in those yeah. days, uh, referee used to say, do that again. So obviously Ali took that on, and um, it wouldn't happen today. It wouldn't happen in today's game. No chance. So no chance. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it was Tomo and Ali Robertson. Really, they would have been doing 15 minutes a game. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would have only played 50 games, Tom. Obviously, would have had VAR. <laughs> <laughs> I would have lasted long, mate. I'm telling you, would have lasted long. <laughs> But how many goals would Bully have lost? Oof. A few. A few. Yeah, 306 to play with. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, some of was a bit dubious uh, where you backed into people or elbowed somebody or kicked them or whatever. But uh, Or took the keeper out in, and the ball as well. He sits. I don't know. I don't know how many I'd lost. Quite a few. Yeah, but backing into people and elbowing, I mean, that's what Chris Uelamo based his game on, and he was, <laughs> still did pretty well for his career, yeah. 20 years later. <laughs> yeah, we got away with murder. Trust me, we got away with murder on the pitch sometimes. Did you have, a, did you have to speak to the referee? I, I always try to kind of befriend them a little bit, you know, talk to them, get them on, on board. You get away with a hell of a lot more. I think you tried doing it the first, first few times. And if the referee don't listen to you, he's, he's that man in black, isn't he, that you don't like. Yeah. And then he starts sweating behind his back and everything, don't you? <laughs> Bully, it's not a case of listening to you, he couldn't understand you. Say again. <laughs> case of him listening to you, he couldn't understand you. Say again. <laughs> <laughs> you got me, son. <laughs> There is an interview that Bully does on the 1989-90 season review VHS, as it would have been at the time, or maybe Betamax, I don't know what was still around at that period. And I, I swear, there were people from kind of deepest, darkest, the black country that wouldn't have understood what you were saying in this video. <laughs> I was very broad in the day. I've uh, calmed down quite a bit now. Oof. That's a penalty as well. Oh, he's got the ball there, touched the ball, then the player, you know what? That, that, back in the day, that used to be deemed as a, a, a good challenge, wasn't it? If you got the ball, any touch to the ball wouldn't be given, would it? No, no, ball and man. Ball first and the man. <laughs> yeah. well, in Stuart Pace's case, it was a man first, then the ball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Big Floyd? Has, it, has anybody said where Big Floyd is, by the way? No. 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 Not heard where he is or what he's doing? Last time I heard, I thought someone said he was back down in Cambridge. Is it? But that must have been about three years ago. Yeah. 
Because, I mean, obviously, Bully and Tomo, you see each other an awful lot, probably more than either of you would actually like to happen. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I see Tomo more than I'd like to happen. Um, uh, you look forward to it, mate. You look yeah, forward yeah, to yeah. He's lying, Tomo. He's I know he is. To, I know he he's is. just trying to give it the begging in front of all the boys and that. You know, <laughs> he loves it, mate. Chris, why do you think he's wearing the T-shirt? Exactly, that, exactly. He's all the last week, not just for it, today. He comes right. for me. He comes for me on all my social media platforms, but then he's sending me little texts telling me that he loves me and all that. I don't know why he tries to give it the begging in front of oh, people. No. Just no. be yourself, Mikey. We're all, all, right. Hang we're on all there. friends here, mate. Come on, set. Oh, he's gonna. Yeah, he's gonna go and put another T-shirt on. Here he goes. Look. No, no, no. For uh, for when I have to do quiz purposes, I've got the Tomo cushion. <laughs> you're sad. You're sad. Oh, he, he cuddles that every night, Tom, in oh, bed. Well, you know what I mean? With that T-shirt on. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. It's just I'm so used to when I do my work to look across and see Tomo next to me that I've had to recreate it. <laughs> but I mean, you mentioned like Floyd Street and stuff. It's like, obviously, I say you two see each other all the time. I know you see Muchi a fair bit, but. As a group, when was the last time you were probably all together? Um, I think, well, we did a, a 30 years, didn't we? Not long ago, uh, with all the lads. And that's what I was asking about Floyd, because he was the only one missing from that from that night. Uh, and it's, when you get us all together, it's it's really, it is. It's like the good old days, back to back to laughing and telling stories, having a few beers and what we do, what happened. Uh, it was a good reunion, wasn't it? The, the Sherpa Van reunion, whatever the model knew. It was absolutely... Yeah, it was. So, well, the thing is, though, even though you haven't seen them for years, it, you still got that affiliation with them. So like, you've still got that link with them. It. It's as if like, you've only seen them yesterday or the, the last yeah. week um, yeah. with the way that the relationships that the lads had. So it, 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 it's always great to see them. Probably don't do it enough, as we probably all do with our teams, where you don't get to see them as much as you should do. But yeah, it, it, was, it was a good night. It was a good night to catch up with a lot of people what why do you why do you think and i know when when money is involved why do you think graham turner decides to go down and, and, and probably recruit recruit different characters different types of players more so probably on the names rather than the the, the player themselves as a, as a person <coughs> i think you have to i think you have to go with uh, with with names uh, like these days if you go for like Aidan Hazard, whoever in the days yeah. when he needs a Dan, that's a massive, massive number. They've got quality with it, but they've also got baggage with it as well. Yeah. It's like it's like any 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 team in your era, Chris and in our era. I mean, you're gonna have the big time Charlies come in thinking they own the club and they do this and whatever. And I think that's what started us but falling apart in about ninety two, ninety three when the money people started coming in because they thought they were bigger than the club and better than the manager, and uh, it disrupts the the apple cart if you know what I mean. Yeah. But also yeah, as well, you've, you've got to bring in players because the manager's under pressure to succeed. OK, he's won the first, the, the two divisions back to back, but you've got to keep progressing. And that's the same with the, the current manager. If you stand still or don't progress, then you get you get the axe, unfortunately. And that's the way it was. He, some, uh, Sir Jack come in, he got money, and then all of a sudden people are expecting you to, to build and to bring a better quality of player, what they would imagine people want to see yeah, but, and, and, yeah. and that's the problem yeah that's well, they, the they, see, they, they see when in a group of players when you bring in a, a quality player it, it lifts everyone in there but that group of players were so close that when you bring in probably a quality player it should have a positive effect but there's a chance it could have a negative effect as well it did it did unsettle like I say and I know like I say people don't but it did unsettle the camp a little bit when they brought people in we Look, I don't know how much money they were on, but there's always the rumours then. All of a sudden, they brought somebody in for decent money and people think, oh, well, there's a big gap in salaries then. And yeah. I think that was one of the things that went on to it as well, where, OK, bringing people in, people always presume that these were getting more money than them as well. And, and they were still doing the same job and they've been there for a few years. And I think that was that was the problem, that people... not I'm not saying the main problem, but... It did unsettle the camp a little bit when you got people coming in. Okay, didn't really settle in as good as they wanted to into a close knit group, and then all of a sudden you have a little bit of a not resentment, but like I said, there's a little bit of a thing going on there. Yeah, of course, of course. And it's probably like Steve and Andy Thompson's been there for a long time, Robbie Dennison, and players are coming in, 
and probably doubling the wages. And it always happens at clubs. The lads who've been there the longest, in the end, get treated the worst. Yeah. You know what I mean? By bringing players in, giving them more money. Oh, Tom will be all right with this. Blah, blah. You know, and it, it doesn't work like that. It's, it, it, well, you know, football can be unfair, yeah. but they should have been on the same money. And again, like, like Bully said, people coming in for big money didn't know the, 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 the close knit we had at the Wolves, you know, and they're thinking the big time Charlies, you know, and, and that's, that's where it went on the pitch. Well, yeah. Mickey, you've got kind of an interesting perspective on this because obviously you joined a little bit ahead of these boys, kind of when the club was still on that way down. I did, and that's why Bully and Tom become quality players because they'd watch me in training and they think, this is where we're going to get. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, I was an inspiration for them too. I knew there was a reason. <laughs> but um, no, it's um, like you said, I was there before, and, and, and it's great listening to Bully and Tom about how bad it was. But I was saying to um, I was just going to join Leeds United before, before I went to Sweden and Eddie Gray got the sack so it was a shock to me coming when you've got you know have your own kit wash your own kit and you think God what have I done and then obviously when Steve and Tom they couldn't believe it no Um, it was amazing because the club at that period Mickey um, obviously was dipping down the the stand, the two stands being closed by then, or was that later on, boys? No, closed when I was there. Uh, the safe bank was open, and the John Islands at the time, um, and the say like uh, the Waterloo Road stand and the North Bank were all were closed. Because say there'd been a fire before we got there in in the Waterloo Road stand, um, which basically demolished the whole stand to a certain degree. Because wasn't it after the Bradford fire, or was it 85, that they said that they had to close those two Yeah, I, I, I was in the stand then. Oh, I was Bradford? At Bradford. Oh, weird. Yeah, I was in the stand then. I was, um, I was at Bradford at the time then. Um, and um, obviously with Don, Don Goodman, me and Don were at Bradford. Um, and it was horrible. And we didn't realise the day after, because we didn't see the, the, you know, the news and how it went. Um, until the next morning when we watched it on calendar and to see how bad it was. You know, you was hearing rumours about people have died and whatever. But um, it, it, to be fair, when we were apprentices, because it was all wood, you know when you clean the stadium up and there's a hole in the wood, you used to throw the cups down there. And that's been going on for years and that's how it actually happened in the end. Someone's had a cigarette and thrown it down at one end and it's, it's caught down one side of the ground and before you knew it, it was in the middle and it just went up so quick. It was horrible. It's crazy, isn't it, when you think about what a different world football is nowadays. That um, I say that you had two stands at Molyneux that weren't being used. I think Graham Turner used to stand on scaffolding, didn't he, to watch the game? Yeah, he used to get a ladder up to the top, yeah, and watch it on his own. And the John Island stand was an absolute country mile away from the pitch. (laughs) Yeah, it was a fair distance. It was a fair distance. I mean, it's unrecognisable from the ground that you see now, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. It's only going to get better as well. Uh, As you say, we've seen the the, the bad times. Here you go, Holmesy. Here you go, (laughs) Holmesy. Who's who's carrying me there? Clarky. Nicky Clark. Clark. And there's Keith Pearson. Hands were a bit near me then, weren't they? <laughs> there. We talk about the John Island stand. It is now, of course, the Steve Ball stand. Yep, it is. Uh, and how we, it came about was uh, so Jack was uh, up, up, upstairs in his flat, and um, we was doing a do downstairs in the Iwood Suite, and uh, he just. Picked the phone, I, picked, I went in and the phone, the, the man behind the counter went, uh, So Jack wants a word with you. I went, Okay, no worries. So I picked the phone, went, How you doing, Sir Jack? Is, oh, jolly well, thank you, jolly well. He says, uh, I, uh, I'm changing the John Lyons stand to see Bulls. And I went, You can't have that. He went, oh, I can, I'm the owner. I went, Oh, okay, okay then. Oh, thanks. When? He says, uh, Next week. I went, Okay, no, put the phone down. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> <laughs> 
schoolboy ever was, I should have said to him, does that come with a villa in Spain as well? <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, it's, it's a privilege to have it there, mate. It's absolutely unbelievable. And uh, as you say, I'm, I think I'm still alive anyway, so just about. Well, there's no statue yet, mate. That's, uh, that gives you a clue. No, no. <laughs> Well, you know that we might get that new temporary stand in the corner. There's some talk about it. Bully, you've obviously got the connections with your very presidential role at the club now. Yeah. There's only one name that can go on that stand, surely. Well, if it's a small stand, it's got to be Tom Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lower seats. Yeah. <laughs> Take a touch the floor. Hi, cheers. Hi, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would be fitting to have a little Tomo stand next to your stand. Yeah, it would. It would. And, and then if there's a stash across it. Well, if there is a statue then, then it will be that picture of the two of you with the ball between your head when you first arrived. <laughs> when we first arrived, yeah. Jeez. That's a picture and a half, that is. Oh, that's when you've got air as well, Bully. Just about. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I've still got mine, Bully, son. Talk to yeah, you guys, so there's, there's, there's only a couple of minutes left in the match now. Is Graham Turner, is he not telling you to... to like, he's still going for this this third goal. Is he not telling you to take it in the corner, kill the game off, slow it down? Because this, well, this is what we're seeing day in, day out now. Well, I, I don't think... Well, if you're watching it on the videos and so where you're looking where Graham is the majority of the time, I don't know if he got out of his seat. <laughs> he had to, didn't he, Tom? <laughs> no, he didn't have to, no. But I don't... I, Every time we've gone there, he's always sitting in his seat, so I don't know if he actually got out of his seat to say anything. Was, was he one I, I manager he, to do that, though, Tomo? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think that he, he knew that we, we could play the game that we wanted and he had, he had trust in us to play the game. Um, I think if we'd probably lose, it would probably been a little bit different, but I think that he realised that we've got enough out there to actually control the game how we were playing it. I know another great ball in and save. But I just think that just shows you the confidence that he had in the team. <coughs> yeah. How are you not 3-0 up here? 4-0, 5-0. I was going to say. Some of the chances, tell you. Oh. Uh, that were much, you know. If it would have been bullied, it would have been a goal then. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to set me up off the post. <laughs> well, I see you screaming at him. Why do you pass it? <laughs> <laughs> Edit across. <laughs> the fans there. I mean, the the fans, thing, yeah. And that's fourth division. You look at that, and so like they've been brilliant. So they have been through the years. I mean, the support and everything that they give you. And like say, fifty odd thousand Wolves fans in Division Fourteen. Unheard of. It came up, Tom. It came up. The stats the previous years. So many fans. I think the year. The year, a couple of years before this, I think it was 57,000, I think it was, 90 here. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it just shows you the passion that they've got for the club and, and it's been maintained every time we get, like me and Mikey go to the away games. It's a sellout. It's just like, yeah. and all you can hear is Wolves fans. Every ground you go to, and that's been the divisions that we've been in. Yeah. Did, did you see that progression, you know? Did you see the fans grow and grow? And I watched a little bit at the start of this before we came on and then uh, they were talking about the fans. It's just with the success that you guys brought back, the fans just started coming back, didn't they? So did you actually see that? Did you notice it or was 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 the fan support there from the start? Yeah, it looks like you're always going to get the diehard fans when we had the South Bank and the, the John Island at the time. There was always a nucleus of uh, fans who watched the game. And but look, so once you start to get success and you start to win things, of course, people are going to start to come and watch it because they want to be entertained. And that yeah. was the thing. So, like, we had a team that were winning and people want to come and watch it. And, it, and look, they've been great fans, so, like, over the years and watching it and going, travelling everywhere. So, look, and I'm saying that's from the fourth division all the way through. And, so, look, it's been unbelievable the, uh, the backing that you've got from them. Oh, there you go. Graham's actually off his seat. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <clears throat> Was that a special cup final suit? Did you all have one of those? Yeah, bright silver. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, they struggled to get Tom on one though, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> custom made. It was custom made, yeah. <laughs> those track suits were minging though, weren't they? Oh, they were, yeah, they were horrible. Yeah. Oh, God. 
Oh, Mickey, I was asking, I was asking the boys earlier if they've still got their shirt from this game. Bully gave it away. Andy Much has given everything away. Tomo might still have it though. I've Tom... got no. I've definitely got mine. I've definitely got mine. Have you got yours? No, I haven't. Um, I know I haven't got it back. I, well, it's definitely not in the house. So I don't know. But I know I haven't got it. I know I'm, I'm, I've moved house a few times, so. You know, put... What's that, Mick? <laughs> Didn't pay me rent again, so. <laughs> <laughs> what about no. what about the winners' medals, gentlemen? You you all got them? The winners' medals still? Yeah, uh, it's I've tucked in a drawer somewhere. Well, I don't know where it is. Tucked in a drawer, the way. So yeah, so all, and the ones with women won the leagues as well. Right. So I've got all them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got them. Hmm. Just not me sure. Oh, must be the only one then. It was a memorable game, you know. <laughs> yeah, but Tomo, <laughs> Tomo, yours wouldn't have fit anyone else. <laughs> so, Mickey, did you did you need help? Did you need help to walk up here, or did you did you have to just get someone else to collect the medal for you? No, I just well, cobbled up. Look at Ali. Ali's moving well as well. <laughs> we didn't know. I didn't know the extent, Chris, until the next day. Do you know what I mean? But he's just basically adrenaline. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just get, you know, obviously they happen. You don't want to miss out on all like that as much as you can. No, not at all. But I mean, you didn't, I didn't know until the next day, I, well, month, sorry, yeah, in, in hospital, how bad it was. Uh, you're not going to miss out. Are you going to, you're going to crawl up if you're going to ask. Of course you are. Of course you are. Up there. Is Ali not going to pass this along or what? <laughs> no. I was going to say, What's I the... think he's, uh, he's took him long enough to get one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he sprinted up those stairs, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't look. He's moving as normal. What about the look of him? That's pull his hat. <laughs> Brilliant. Class. He's still not going to give this to anyone, is he, Ali? No. That's it. He's keeping it. There he is. Oh, there he is. Bobbling, yeah. yeah. That's sorry, and after the game, it was Jackie who gave me a piggyback, you know, for the um, when you run around the pitch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, there's Ali with his younger brother. This must bring back some amazing memories, boys. Yeah, it was great. I say, whenever you've asked me what was the best day in football career, this is by far the best day with who was there uh, and getting the right results as well. Yeah. There was a lot of, there's a lot of players that have long careers that, that don't experience like cup finals and winning championships. You know, you've got to you got to enjoy it. But it doesn't really hit home until probably you, you finish your career and then you think about what you've done. At this moment you're probably thinking, summer off, next season, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you look at it. I mean, I, I would look at a player at Wembley three times. I don't know about Andy and well, Steve must have played loads. Yeah. It's just unbelievable to play at Wembley. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I played two two walls in the cell. I was there with Tranmere. I was subbing the uh, the League Cup final against Leicester, where your brother-in-law scored two goals. He did, somehow, Yeah, I didn't know he did. I was there, mate. Unfortunately, we lost 2-1. Ned scored. Yeah, he made it one all, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. And then Matt scored the winner. Matt scored the winner. Yeah, he scored two, didn't he? Yeah, and God, his, his dad had a bet on him, you know, first goal and last goal. Unbelievable. Made a fortune. Yeah, so, yes. So, fortune, yeah. So, didn't finish on a, well, Wembley appearances on a high. <laughs> what? Why is this man in the match award? It's a golden record. It's, it's Bob Marley, isn't it? You know, yeah. right. He's part of his singing career. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen, given as a man of the match award. I'll tell you who, who used to do it. Was it the London Wolves who used to give you a gold disc for the player of the season? Something like that. As well. Yeah, yeah. I think it was London Wolves, so that might it might have been who sponsored the game. So like, uh, but that's what they used to give you for a uh, player of the season, a gold disc. Yeah. Incredible, absolutely incredible. 
Boys, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us for this. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Anytime, anytime at all. No, no, thank you, guys. Been a pleasure, mate. Give me an, an hour to get on technology again. I might be at the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. All right, boys, I'll see you later. Take care, Tomo. Okay. And you, see you later. Have a good one. See you, boys. See you, see boys. See you later, Mickey. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks, mate. Not see you later. Thanks, Bye. Mickey. Bye, mate. Pleasure. So, Chris, I, I mean, I found that fascinating, you know, and it, it's incredible to watch the guys as well and watch how kind of into looking back on this game they were, because it's such a long time ago. Yeah, you know, I think the first, you can see it, you know, I think uh, when, when Mitchell was, was talking, Ali's just watching the game, you know, he's, he's uh, analysing it, you can see he was just in complete depth with it, but no, what a great memory. And like you say, it's a fantastic achievement as well. After a great season, after an outstanding week uh, in Spain, they came and performed like that. And I mean, you're talking the last 10, 15 minutes where you're probably trying to just kill the game off. They were going to try and get the third goal. Probably should have had four or five goals uh, on the day with the chances created. But the energy, as Tomo said, without the ball, how they used to press. You know, we'll talk about this now, the, the high press that we're seeing today football. The energy, the, the, the effort that they put in, from the first minute to the last, outstanding. Thoroughly, des thoroughly deserved the win as well. Uh, but great match to watch and obviously having the, the five guests, outstanding. Well, hopefully there will be another special day at Wembley. We nearly had it last season. Hopefully the wait will not be too much longer. Thank you everybody for watching as ever. This has been Old Gold Club, big match revisited, powered by Blythe Group. And we'll be back again soon. Stay safe, everyone. Take care.